Hi, and welcome to the Modern Persian Food Podcast. We are food bloggers, Bita Arabian and Bita Nazim Kelly, and we're here to share with you the rich flavors and fresh ingredients of Persian cooking and how to incorporate them into today's modern lifestyles. We're excited to introduce you to the flavors, tastes, and techniques we use, and also our own cultural stories and perspectives growing up in the U.S. in a Persian family. Thank you for joining us. Well, hello, Vita Jun. Hi there. Today we're talking about winter flavors. This is going to be a seasonal episode, our episode number 10, where we explore the cozy winter flavors and ingredients, things we either grew up eating or we enjoy eating now, including an interesting holiday that we have in our culture that happens at the turn of the seasons. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, absolutely. Shabi Yalda. So a lot of people just call it Yalda, which falls on the winter solstice. So this year it's going to be on December 20th. And it's basically the longest night of the year. And it is a very old tradition, back Zoroastrian tradition, where everyone kind of stays up late and celebrates basically with like their elders and they stay up late telling stories and eating fruits and there's certain fruits that are at the setting and just enjoy like a nice long evening together. And that marks the longest night of the year, as I mentioned. And after that, the days start getting longer and the nights start getting shorter. I can't wait to learn more. My family didn't celebrate it. My mom talks about it. I know that it happened, but we didn't grow up celebrating it. And so actually, I think that this year it falls on Monday, December 21st. Oh, does it? Okay, sorry. It's on the winter solstice. And as you know, that time kind of varies every year, as does like Persian New Year. The solstices and the equinox actually those dates are very specific depending on the year. So sometimes the Shabi Yalda will fall on the 20th, sometimes the 21st, but at the exact moment of the solstice is when we actually celebrate that. And for like Persian New Year, whenever it turns into the spring equinox, that time varies depending on where the sun and the moon and the stars are. So it varies by a few hours like every year. So thank you for correcting that. Yeah, I love that about our culture. It just feels earthy, the change of the seasons. And mm-hmm. and these occasions are not religious. These are just old Persian tradition. But yeah, Shabi Yanda, we didn't necessarily grow up having like a feast or a big party or anything on those days, but it's definitely something that my family would recognize and eat in place of setting for foods that we would eat on that day. And personally, now in my life, I just honestly, I look for occasions to celebrate, especially in the kind of the times that we're in right now, you know, having a few certain fruits and nuts and things that I'll talk about in a second and celebrating that moment it just makes it feel like a little bit more normal in a time where there's so many crazy things happening, you know, elections, COVID, just all of the different things and different challenges that we've kind of had this year. So I'm definitely looking forward to having a great Shabi Yalda and some of the foods that we eat on that day. So pomegranates are a big featured food. You may find it funny, but watermelon actually is a fruit that is always there. It's one of like the kind of the, the set fruits that will make an appearance for Shabi Yalda. In the olden days, they would preserve their watermelons like in a warehouse or a dark area so that it would actually like make it till the solstice. So yeah, watermelon. Wow, this is an occasion I've already added it on my calendar, even though I didn't grow up celebrating it. Uh-huh. I'm with you. I want to have another occasion to party. So you're partying with fruit. Yeah, with fruit, <laughs> with ajin. Ajin, so it's like dried nuts and fruits like raisins and walnuts and almonds. And so ajin is shirin. So it's basically like a trail mix of sorts that we have. I love Ajil. I didn't know that was also a part of it. Isn't it also part of Persian New Year that we have it yeah. when it turns into spring? I always make it for that. Trail mix, right? With yeah. anything you want. The dried fruit, colorful fruit, and nuts, almonds. Yeah, pistachios, raisins, cranberries if you want. 
And like I said, pomegranates and also some of like those fall fruits that are still around, like the persimmons and things like that. Those are all like some of the main foods that you have. And you basically just kind of get together with like the elders and you sit and you chat and have tea and celebrate together and be with each other and have a nice cozy evening. I love that. So cut up the fruit, have the yummy Persian trail mix, stay up late. Yeah, and have tea. Okay. I'm going to do that. Maybe even dance. I might even dance. Yeah, might as well. You know, the changing of the seasons, it's just interesting that like the weather changes, the foods change and how life kind of changes from season to season. What else do you consider to be a Persian winter flavor? Did you ever grow up eating limushirin, sweet lemons? No, it sounds like a Meyer lemon. It kind of like looks like a Meyer lemon. It has like a smooth skin, very round lemon. And that's definitely like a winter fruit that has a ton of vitamin C and is very nutritious for you. So if you're like feeling a little under the weather or something like that, usually sweet lemons like provide a ton of vitamin C to help you get better. So do they just eat the lemon? Basically suck on a lemon? The way we eat it is we'll kind of either quarter it or put it in eighths. And then you kind of like just bite it. It's not like super sweet, but it's not like a tart lemon. I would say it's like even like a more like dry flavor to it. You'll see them sometimes in the farmer's market or a Persian market. What are some of your winter comfort foods and flavors? So for me, cinnamon feels cozy. Mm -hmm. And cinnamon is a spice that we use in a lot of Persian dishes. Mm -hmm. Also to me, lentils and beans And potatoes all feel like stick to your bones, comfort foods. And we do have dishes. So what are some of the dishes you like? At Espolo is a delicious lentil rice. And it's one of the layered rices that has not only lentils and cinnamon, but it also can have raisins and dates and nuts sometimes. And it's really delicious and comforting and nutritious. Mm -hmm. I love that one. Mm -hmm. There is a rice dish, Estamboli Polo. My grandma used to make it. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Spanish rice. So it's kind of like a tomato-y rice. Uh But again, it has some Persian flavors and potatoes. It's just like a good, comforting, filling, nice dish. Some people will eat it with meat. Other people will have it like with an egg. Mm -hmm. And it's really easy. How about you? Did you ever eat those things? I've had Estamboli Polo a few times. I'll be curious actually how you make it. I love Adas Polo. And, you know, you mentioned the topping of like the raisins and the dates. So the rice, like when you want to serve a platter of the Adas Polo, you have like the platter of the rice that has the lentils in it. And then you kind of have as a topping, usually caramelized onions with raisins and sometimes dates. And it kind of like is like a little garnish on top of the platter of the rice. So it's lovely how the basic rice gets elevated with these sweet flavors and usually actually in that mix there's a little bit of cinnamon too how do you make your estambadi puro because i actually have never made it i've only had it a few times do you cook the rice with the tomatoes and the potatoes at the same time Sorry, but just to go back to Adas Polo, I think I layer it. Again, this is where we differ in our little way of making it. Uh-huh. Yeah. I don't put it as a topping, but I actually like layer it in with parboiled rice oh. and have it all cook oh. in. The raisins and the dates, you mean? So I cook the lentils separately. I cook the rice separately just to a parboil. Uh-huh. And then I will layer it back in the pot you know, put some oil if you want to make teddy, get the bottom, the crispy rice crust, uh-huh. and then a layer of rice, then put a layer of the lentil raisin dates. Oh, you mix the lentils with the raisins and dates. Yeah, and then put the rice and then put the lentil raisin and dates. And you can put cinnamon on the very top and then poke your holes. So I cook it all in so everything gets the flavors in the pot. Yeah. Estamboli polo, truth be told, I don't make it a ton. Uh-huh. But I do make like a Spanish rice. So I'll just kind of use like a can of stewed tomatoes. Um, And I don't know that I make it the right way. So I I make it more like a Spanish rice with garlic and add some cooked potatoes in and stir it together. Okay. Yeah, that sounds delicious. We do have the something that's similar to like a potato latka. Mm -hmm. And that's like a potato pancake. And it's delicious. It's normally sort of fried. The Farsi word for it is kuku sibzabini. Have you made that before? Kuku sibzabini is great. You know, I traditionally make my kuku basically like kind of like a frittata 
a Spanish omelet type of dish. I usually make mine actually with spinach and herbs, like a oh. cuckoo sabzi. Oh, interesting. But the cuckoo sibzamini is made with potatoes, like as you say. And so I think you're talking about smaller patties that you fry individually. I love eating them, but I sometimes don't have the patience to stand to actually like fry the individual ones. So I'll make like a bigger one that fits a whole pan. But those are so delicious because you get the crust on each side of the patty. What seasonings do you put in yours? Again, I haven't made this a ton myself, but I do love eating it. <laughs> uh-huh. There's also one that has meat in it, and I think that one's called cotelette. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's right. So cotelette is got great spices. I have never made cotelette. It's kind of like a spiced patty. I don't know. What would you call it? You put turmeric, salt, and pepper. Sometimes you could add a little bit of cumin to it. The cotelette has ground meat in it, and the cuckoo sibzamini does not have meat in it typically. And you mix that with a few eggs, sometimes a tablespoon of flour, and in your version, make them into individual patties. And then in my version, just have like a big one that fits the whole pan. And then once it's cooked on one side, then flipping it over. So the potato one is great for vegetarians. It sometimes has the tart barberries that we call zareshk. And it's delicious. Yeah, the kids eat it with ketchup. Both of those are deep fried. How can you go wrong? <laughs> yeah, exactly. If I'm going to have it with like a little bit of like a, a thin bread, like a lavash or like a pita bread and uh, with fresh herbs in it, that's like one of my favorite ways to have it because you're getting the freshness from the herbs and still getting part of the fried potato, which is so delicious. Those are great winter comfort foods that, like you said, like stick to your ribs and make you feel all cozy as the weather is colder. I was just going to say rice in general, any rice dish to me is Mm -hmm. a good winter food. We have so many types of rice and layered rice. I grew up in cold states of Indiana and Michigan. And so we certainly had a lot of rice and yummy Persian food. My mom would make meatloaf and sometimes she'd sneak in some Persian spices. She always made the same roasted veggie dish with her meatloaf. It was like a staple. She'd cut up her potatoes, onions, and carrots, and she sort of put them around either a meatloaf or a roast, and that was like our winter meal. Oh, God, that sounds great. I've tried to recreate it. It's never as good as hers. But I do have my roasted vegetables that I make with a samar, with sumac. Uh Uh-huh. I do use my air fryer like crazy to make vegetables and cut down on oil and make things in a more healthy way. What else do you do in the winter? So I have this festive little dessert that I love to make either for Shabiyanda or for some of the holidays. And it kind of incorporates some Persian flavors to it, but it's so fun and it's so easy. It's basically getting a sheet of puff pastry that comes frozen and you can thaw it for a few hours, even on the countertop or just overnight in the refrigerator. And I open that up and I sprinkle on top of it different nuts and dried berries like cranberries, pepitas, pumpkin seeds, golden raisins, and a bunch of brown sugar. And I roll it up with those different flavors inside, and then I'll cut them. So think of like cinnamon rolls, but more like a jeweled roll. Then I'll put those individual ones into little like cupcake holders so that when they puff up, then they are these little self-contained delicious little treats. And I bake them in the oven and and then I'll flip them out and serve them on a platter. And it's a great little thing to have with tea or to put on your dessert table as a fun little Persian-inspired little jeweled roll. Did you come up with that? That sounds amazing. That sounds easy and delicious. Have you ever put cream in it too? Or do you steer away from making it too complicated with custards? No, I never tried it with like cream or custard or anything like that. But actually, I put melted butter down on the puff pastry first, and then I sprinkled everything on. But no, I kind of had inspiration over the years from like different recipes. And I started making that a few years ago. And I actually like really love it because we really like to have cinnamon rolls during the holidays. And this is kind of like a variation of that. You can have it for Shabayanda, you can have it for the holidays. Mm, okay, so it's, it's more of a cinnamon roll, but then you also put fruit and nuts. Yep, dried fruit and nuts in it. Oh, that sounds amazing. I'm going to try it. Please send me a picture next time so I have a a better idea of it. That sounds delicious. I think we're getting to the section now of our podcast episode that we are calling Ask the Beats. Today's question comes from Megan of The Seasoned Cook from Oakland. And Megan wants to know if there's a good substitute for rose water. 
I think that's a really good question for two reasons. One is if you don't actually have rose water and you can't get to a market that sells it. And two, I think also sometimes people don't love rose water. So how can you have like a very special recipe and not use rose water? What other flavors can you use? So personally, I actually like to use vanilla instead of rose water sometimes. I think we mentioned like the cream puffs. Typically they'll have rose water in the cream and I like to use vanilla. But I find that when I want to kind of have some sweet flavor, vanilla really does the trick for me. Bisuja, what do you think? Yeah, I would agree with you that I don't think there's a substitute for it if you want to get the same flavor. Rose water is usually used in desserts. So yes, like you said, vanilla extract, almond extract Mm. is really nice in Persian desserts. It would change the flavor, but you could use orange blossom water. Mm -hmm. I haven't done this, but you could experiment with using culinary rose petals and kind of grinding them down Mm -hmm. into a powdered form and see if that would give a rose flavor that you're looking for. But in general, the dried rose petals are used as a decoration or in more savory foods. I haven't heard of them used as a substitute for rose water, but it's worth trying. That's a good question. Yeah, that is a good question. Thanks so much for asking that, Megan. So this was great. Thank you so much, Mita, for having this great conversation about winter flavors and foods that we have in our Persian culture. And I look forward to talking to you more next week. Thanks, Bita. So you've been listening to Modern Persian Food with Bita and Bita. Thanks for spending time with us. If you enjoyed what you heard today, consider telling your friends or giving us a good rating on iTunes. You can subscribe to our show for free on your favorite podcasting app or find us online at modernpersianfood.com for recipes and info that we talked about today. Thanks so much. We'd love to hear your thoughts and see you next time.